Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Joachim Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, November 20th, 2022, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. Brethren, God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. And today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 12, verses 16 through 21. The Lord said this parable, The land of a rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought to himself, What shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? And he said, I will do this, I will pull down my barns, and I will build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things which you have prepared, whose will they be? So is he who lays up treasure for himself, and is not rich towards God. And he said these, as he said these things, he cried out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. This is probably, for today's day and age, one of the more disturbing parables that are found in the scriptures. Because for us, especially here in 21st century America, we think about having bigger barns, bigger places to store our stuff, bigger 401k plans to make sure that we have a future where we can tell our souls, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. That sounds like a retirement plan. Well, as we see in this particular parable, God is not very pleased with this person. And why is that? Because this person is rich towards self and poor towards God. This is a great mystery to us, but what God expects us to do is learn how to provide for ourselves with mercy, but not so that we begin to depend only on our own abilities, to depend only on ourselves, but rather so that what we do may begin to bring ease and comfort to the needy around us. It is not a matter of doing these good things so that we can puff ourselves up, but rather that we can help to ease the pain of the less fortunate. We still, no matter where we find ourselves, in richness, in poorness, in youth or in old age, in ability or disability, in strength or in weakness, in all of these matters, we need to see ourselves as completely and utterly dependent on God. The rich man's problem is that he thought those crops belonged to himself, to him and to him only. He wasn't helping the poor. He wasn't helping the farmer next door who did not have as successful a yield as he did. He's not helping the resident alien or the widow or the orphan. He's saying to himself, I have done enough and I don't need to do any more to take care of myself and only myself. And to have that kind of feeling especially in that day and age when crops were not a short outcome and when food might be more scarce for others and still be plentiful for some, to be deaf and blind to the needs of the people around him, that was a grievous error and it made himself poor towards God and made him, well, a recipient of God's wrath. A very sobering message for us, but one that we need to take to heart so that we understand how we are to live in this day and age. We are to do what we can to use our talents to God's greater glory, 
but we also must be available to help those around us that are needy. And we need to focus on these things so that we do not find ourselves wanting in the great and fearful second coming. And may God bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. I thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.